Well, hello everybody, and um, I'm going to be uh, doing some recordings um, in regards to different topics that, um, as as a pastor, I want you to know. I want you guys to to be aware. Uh, I'm recording from work today, and if you know me, I'm a teacher, and I teach U.S. history. That's why you see a couple of flags in the back. Um, recording early in the morning, so not during. We're not doing this during work hours, uh, but we are. I'm here early, so. I do want to come at you, um, and I'm going to start a series, and this series is over the Trinity, and uh, it's going to be four parts. So we're going to talk about the Father right now, then the Son, and then the Holy Spirit, and then we'll do a summary, and we'll see how all they all coordinate in one. And it's important for me that you know these topics, that you know, and so I want to get into actual Bible teaching. I want to get into... Um, into the scriptures. I don't want you to, to to be tossed here and there. And it's important because the word says that the reason why people um, fail in their faith and why they go away is because they're tossed to and fro in the wind because they don't know the scriptures. They don't understand. And uh, and when we get to the Holy Spirit, I think it's going to be really uh, rooted in you. So let's get started. Um, I'm going to try to make these um, straight, simple, and to the point. Um, this is not an easy topic, and I'm just going to start off by saying that we're never really going to comprehend the uh, the Trinity. And the word Trinity there means three, right? So tri means three, like a tricycle um, is a is a bike with three wheels. So the Trinity means three parts. So it's God and three parts. So we, we are a Trinitarian church, it means we do believe in the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, and that they're three in one. Um, so this is a holy, holy divine topic that our, our, our minds, our, our human carnal minds cannot really comprehend because we're finite and we don't, and, and we don't understand the supernatural. We don't understand. And, and, and you're going to see how so many things mix and how they do have different personalities. The Father, Son, and Holy Spirit have different personalities, but they are the same person. And um, there's a couple of illustrations that I can give you for you to understand. The, the first one is the most famous one of all, which is the one that St. Patrick said, which is the um, God is like a, a three-leaf clover in which you have three parts. You have the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. So there are, there's three in one. Three in one. And um, they're different parts. However, they all belong to the same being. And so that's how the Holy Spirit is and the Father and the Son. The Trinity are all one being, but three different manifestations, three different ways. Um, the My favorite one that I heard not too long ago is the Son. The Son, like the actual uh, star in the sky that gives us warmth. Um, the Sun, we have the actual planet, or the star, you know what I mean, the rock itself, the actual sun, that would represent the Father. And then we have the rays that come out from the sun, that is the sun, like the sun as in Jesus, the sun. And then you have the heat that comes with those rays, and that's the Holy Spirit. And so um, what you're going to understand during this uh, four-part series is that the Father wills, wills it, a will meaning I want this to happen, so the Father wills it, the Son administers the will, and the Holy Spirit is the power that gets it done. Um, so let's get into the Father today, and I'm going to give you some scriptures. So part one is the Father. Um, God the Father is the creator of all things. So God the Father is the one who wills it. He's the one um, who actually says that he wants it to get done. He wants a certain action to get done. So he's the one that says, I want the world to be made, for example. He's a creator. He's the one whom um, whom Jesus, the Son, calls Father. And we will see it later on when we get down to the Son in the next um, in the next uh, video that I'm going to make. But he's, when Jesus prays and he goes, Father, he's talking to God the Father. Okay, so a lot of times people will say God and Jesus. That kind of, that doesn't make sense, biblically speaking, because Jesus is God. The Holy Spirit is God. So what they're trying to say is the Father and Jesus. So you just I want you to make sure you have the right terminology. So it's the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. The Father is the creator. So check this out. Um, well, before I say this, he's the one who gives. He's the one who loves. He's the one who provides. He's the one who desires nothing more than the well-being of his children. So check this out in John 17, 1 through 5. It says, And Jesus spoke these words, lifted up his eyes to heaven, and he said, Father, the hour has come. 
glorify your son, that your son also may glorify you as you have given him authority over all flesh. So Jesus is saying, you've given me authority over all flesh, that he should give eternal life to as many as you have given him. So we have been given to Jesus by the Father. And this is eternal life, that they may know you, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, who is himself, whom you have sent. I have glorified you, Father, on the earth. I have finished the work which you have given me to do. So you see how the Father's one willing it. He says, Jesus, I want you to do this work. I have finished the work which you have given me to do. And now, O oh Father, glorify me together with yourself, with the glory which I've had with you before the world was created. So Jesus teaches us that God the Father is also our Father too. He's not just the Father of Jesus. He is the Father of our Father. And I we're going to get into more detail, okay? And, and you may be leaving with questions, and that's okay. It's actually good to leave with questions. And that's why we have the Holy Spirit, and, he's, and we're going to learn about that later on. So, who can claim God the Father as their Father? Only those who have recognized and accepted and given their lives to Jesus the Son. This is what John 1, 12 through 13 says. Yet to all those who did receive him, to those who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God. Children not born of natural descent like we were born, or of human decision or husband's will, but born of God. So this is why when Jesus gives, teaches us to pray in Matthew 6, 9, he says, Our Father who art in heaven. He says, when you pray, you should say this way, Our Father who art in heaven, holy is your name. So here he's saying, he's your father too. This is the first time that we hear the, that he's saying, this is your father too. So God the Father is our father. And he's not, wouldn't have been, it hasn't, it hasn't happened through natural decision, a husband's decision. On here it says, children not born of natural descent or of a human decision or husband's will, but born of God. So when we give our life to Jesus, that's called being born again. And we've given our lives over to him. And so the father takes us in as our own now. He takes us in as our own now. So I've heard people say, for example, things like, we're all God's children. That's not biblically true. We are not all God's children. Well, we've all, God made us all, and that's true. He did make us all, but we have not. If you have not recognized Jesus as the one and only Son who comes from the Father, and we've given our lives over to Him, then you cannot claim God the Father as your Father. And so therefore, you don't have the privileges that a son or a daughter has. So people, they'll go and they'll pray, and they'll say, um, they'll pray to God. But who is God? God is Jesus. God the Father is also, recognizes the name of Jesus. So people will, will pray, and they'll say, well, God didn't answer my prayer. Are you his son? Are you his daughter? He's going to listen to his children's prayer. Just like me as a father, when my children come to me, I listen to their requests. I listen to what they're telling me to do or what they're asking me to do. And if I see that it is good for them, then I will make it happen. But if I see that their request is not, is not correct or their request is not um, beneficial to them, then I won't make it happen and I'll tell them not yet or no. That's the way the Father works with us, but it's because we have been become His children only if we recognize. I'm gonna read that again, John 1, 12 through 13. Yet to all who did receive Him, who? The context here is Jesus. I encourage you to go back and read these and look at the context. To all who did receive him, to those who believed in his name, he has given the right to become children of God. So you're only a child of God if you recognize Jesus as the only way to the Father. So God the Father is the creator. He's the one who's made all things. He's the one who intensely loved and is incredibly generous. That's why in John 3, 60, he says, For God so loved the world, he gave his one and only son. He gave. He gave his only one, his only begotten son. So he is the one who loved the world, and he's the one who gave his son to save that world that he created. God the Father is the one who wills, who wills it. So we see this, and this will be the last thing I say for this video, because I don't want to make him too long. I think the longest one is probably going to be um, the Holy Spirit, because that one's real deep. Um, but if we see this in, in the third verse of the Bible, Genesis 1, verse 3, when God is going to make the world, he's going to make this earth, he says, let there be light. So God the Father said, let there be light. That's his will. 
His will is for the for there to be light. His will was to create all things. And we see throughout the Genesis story, the creation story about how he's willing things. He's wanting things to happen. So he says, let this happen. Let this happen. Let this happen. Let there be light. Let there be um, let there be a separation between the waters and dry land. So he's he's wanting it to happen. And so the sun, that's where the sun comes in. And this is where we'll segue to part two on the next video is, so now it's the sun. So the father wills it. He's the one that says, I wish that this would happen. I will for this to happen. The son hears the will of the father and he says, I'm going to get that done. And he goes and he administers it and makes sure that it gets done. He's like a manager. He manages to make sure that the will of the boss is getting done. And then the Holy Spirit is the power of God that comes and makes it happen. The Holy Spirit is not a force. The Holy Spirit is not, you know, it's not like the... the like Star Wars, it's like a force that you use to wield, you know, you wield its power. No, the Holy Spirit is also a person and he has a personality and we're going to get into that later. The Son has his own personality. The Father has his own personality. Though they're all the same being, they're three different personalities. And I just, I pray that the Holy Spirit starts opening the understanding of your heart, starts opening your, your mind to understand what this means. Because without the Holy Spirit, we cannot comprehend what this means we can't comprehend the trinity it's very hard to comprehend it but at the same time it's very very easy so we, we have to believe i'm telling you the first step is just to believe i believe that god is three in one and suddenly you're going to start seeing and i see it all over the place in the, in the scriptures while i'm reading the the trinity being manifested um so god the father what is the manifestation of god the father how the, the word tells us in psalms that, that he says, let the earth be quiet, let the earth be still, be silent before the Lord, for the for God is in his holy temple. So let all the earth be quiet. And so a lot of times whenever if we're having a meeting, everything is suddenly shushed and it calms down. And there's like a reverence that, the best way I can describe it is reverence. There's a reverence because he's a mighty king and he's a great and holy king. He's holy, that's what he is. And so th there is no words to describe him. Holy is the word to use to describe him. He's just so holy. And so when when the Father, and I'm, and I'm speaking out of experience now, when you feel this is the manifestation of God the Father coming in here, it's everybody just sits quiet and he's just like, you don't wanna move, you just wanna sit there. It's like a reverence, like a great king has walked into a room, everybody's just staring at him. That is the manifestation of the Father. I, one of the best ways, and you can see it in nature, is, for example, an eagle or a lion, in which the way that they sit there, they're perked up like a like an eagle. They're looking, and they're just majesty. That's what it is, just majestic. And that is God the Father. He's majestic. He is the creator of all things. He's the one that wills things to be happened, and he loves. He lo He's incredibly loving. He's incredibly generous. He's incredibly giving everything about him. And we all see it, and that's where we're going to segue into the second one. We see it in the person of Jesus. We see it in the person of Jesus, because Jesus is the image of the invisible God, says Colossians. So we're going to get into that in the next one. So I hope that this helps you understand. Um, I, if I were you, I would watch it a few times over and just try to comprehend the Father. This is who the Father is, um, and the, we really need the Holy Spirit. So I'm just going to pray, Lord, I just... I pray that the understanding of my brothers and my sisters would be open to understand, open to understand the Trinity. Help us to believe and to know. Peter, when he was with Jesus, he says, we have come to believe and we have come to know that you are the Messiah, the Son of the living God. First we believe and then we know. As humans, we want to know and then believe. But I pray that we would believe and as we believe, we just say, I believe then we start to know. When you were a kid, you did not understand oxygen. You just breathed it in. You just knew it was there because you were living. And then as you got older, you started an understanding. It's the same way here. I can feel the presence of the Lord right now. Hmm. Sweet Jesus, I just pray that you would help us to understand. Sorry, I just feel the presence of the Lord right now. And I hope you're feeling the presence of the Lord right there where you are. <laughs> I 
could feel him right now. His presence is so strong. Father, come and reveal your nature to your people. Reveal your nature to your people. Help us to believe. Help us to believe. Help us to believe. And then we will get to know. Fill us with your presence. Fill us with your presence. I can sense some of you still struggling in your mind. Just believe. I'm telling you. Just believe. What do you have to lose? Just believe. I believe in God the Father. I believe in the Son. I believe in the Holy Spirit. I don't understand how, but there are three in one. And believe me, I've been in the ways of the Lord for 30 years almost, and, and I still don't fully comprehend because we're not meant to comprehend this. We're just meant to accept it. And as we go along, we'll start comprehending more and more. But we won't fully comprehend until we're in glory with Him. Then we'll fully comprehend. But as of now, our, our minds, our, our brains, just we don't comprehend because God is outside of time and space. We don't understand it because it's not in our paradigm. But believe, I just believe in the Lord. Believe in the Lord and you will understand as time goes on. You'll start comprehending more. I love you with all my heart and I want nothing more. As your pastor, this is mostly for the church that the Lord has conceived in our home called Bethany um, out in Katy, Texas. So uh, this is for anybody who's watching this really, but I, I'm making this specifically for our people um, because I want you to be filled with the knowledge of the Lord. Some of these things, sometimes we don't have time to talk about them during church. Um, and we would do it in a Sunday school, but we don't have that yet. So I, I thought this was might be the best way. You could watch it at home. You could watch it on your own time and you could replay it and replay it and then ask questions in person or ask questions in the comments. Share it with anybody that you may know and just look forward to the second um, the second one, part two, where we talk about the Son. I love talking about the Son. I love talking about the Holy Spirit, the Father, all of them. They're just so beautiful and wonderful, each in their own way. So I love you, and um, I hope you have a wonderful rest of the day. Bye-bye.